Good afternoon. I will now call this meeting to order. Welcome, everybody. It is Tuesday, June 8th. Um, I apologize. We're a few minutes late. It's 5.05 p.m. Uh, we are starting our regularly scheduled board meeting this afternoon. Welcome to, uh, good to see all of my board colleagues, Dr. Miguel, um, to all of our staff present. Thank you for being here. Um, and to everybody joining us virtually on YouTube, thank you for joining us and watching our meeting this afternoon. We'll go ahead and, uh, and get started, as I do with every board meeting. We'll read our board norms and protocols. As a board, we agree to respect the differences of opinions in making decisions for the district, to follow best practices in managing the superintendent and the management of the board itself, to stay on task when conducting business for the district, including while at board meetings, to never surprise the superintendent or each other when conducting official business of the district, to read these norms at the beginning of each board meeting and at board workshops as a reminder of how to conduct our meetings and to continually self-check to determine if we are following our norms when conducting district business. With that, Ms. Smith, would you please do a roll call? Yolanda Clark. Yolanda Clark present. Maxine Drew. Maxine Drew present. Janie Humphreys. Janie present. Randy Lopez. Randy Lopez present. Wanda Brownlee Page. Wanda Brownlee Page present. Dr. Wynn. Dr. Wynn present. Dr. Yeager. Dr. Yeager present. Thank you. Thank you. Um, before I, um, before we approve our agenda today, um, I do just want for us to take a moment of silence. Um, today we lost um, another student and um, in a very tragic moment for our district and community. Um, and it breaks our heart to see this happen um, again for one of our family members and our students. So I'd invite you all to join, join us in a moment of silence as we honor uh, the life of our student uh, and respect their family and pray for first for, for their family, for our community, um, and that we may find peace. So please join me in a moment of silence. Thank you. Mr. Lopez, I'm sorry. I should have said this before. We also lost Jackie Lloyd, who worked at uh, Gloria Willis. We also lost Mr. Grayson, a former educator in the district, who also was funeralized this past week. And I'm quite sure there's others, but those were the only two that I know. And we want to uh, respect their families as well. Absolutely. Thank you, Ms. Page. And we pray and, and for, for all the families uh, who have lost a loved one, um, those that Ms. Page has mentioned, um, and especially those that we've lost to violence. Uh, and and yes. so we just continue to pray for our community um, as we go through this and uh, go through this together and hopefully come out stronger. So thank you, Ms. Page, for that. And thank you to everyone for, um, for that moment of, of respect for those families. Um, before we approve tonight's regular agenda, I would actually entertain a motion um, to amend the agenda and add the assurances certification to our consent agenda. So, so moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Discussion? If not, Ms. Smith, roll call, please. Yolanda Clark. Yolanda Clark, yes. Maxine Drew. Maxine Drew, yes. Janie Humphrey. Janie, yes. Randy Lopez. Randy Lopez, yes. Wanda Brownlee Page. Wanda Brownlee Page, yes. Dr. Wynn. Dr. Wynn, yes. Dr. Yeager. Dr. Yeager, yes. Thank you. Motion passes. Thank you. So, Ms. Smith, please add that to our consent agenda for tonight's meeting. Thank you so much. We'll continue on with our agenda. Next up is our community comment okay. section. We do not have any co comments submitted you have to for. Approve the agenda, Randy. I'm sorry. Thank you, Dr. Yeager. <laughs> I take a motion to approve the amended agenda. So, so moved. Second. 
Moved and seconded, Ms. Smith. Yolanda Clark. Yolanda Clark, yes. Maxine Drew. Maxine Drew, yes. Janie Humphreys. Janie, yes. Randy Lopez. Randy Lopez, yes. Wanda Brownlee Page. Wanda Brownlee Page, yes. Dr. Wynn. Dr. Wynn, yes. Dr. Yeager. Dr. Yeager, yes. Thank you. Thank you for the reminder, Dr. Yeager. Motion passes. Um, so we have our community comments section. No comments were submitted for today's meeting. However, just a reminder for our community members watching, uh, you are always welcome to submit a comment. At this time, we are still limiting visitors into central office. So if you would like to submit a comment, you can please contact Ms. Leslie Smith, our board clerk, and she can get you the information on how to submit a comment properly. Uh, make sure those comments are submitted on no later than noon on the Monday before the board meeting so that they may, may be added to the agenda and then read at the meeting. Thank you so much. So now we'll go on with our agenda. And uh, first up, Dr. Miguel, you have some items to share with us. I do. Thank you so much, um, Mr. Lopez. I have um, lots of things to celebrate. It's a sad day for the district, but we also have um, some good things going on that I would like to share uh, with you. We're going to start with a summer school update. And I would like to invite Ms. Scott and, and um, Mr. Terrence Sanders to share an update. Um, we started summer school yesterday, so we wanted to bring you an update of what's happening. Good evening, President Lopez, Vice President Brownlee Page, Dr. Miguel, and board members. I have the pleasure of sharing along with my colleague an update on summer school. We just completed our second day today, and we have about 100 30 pre-K students enroll. At the elementary level, every elementary school received a site visit from district leadership to support our buildings just as we would do on the first day of any school year. This support is offered to our administrators, our teachers, and our staff as they welcomed our students to summer school. We are happy to report a very start smooth to our summer school session. In fact, we had several uh, students who were not previously enrolled and we welcomed them and got them in their classes as quickly as we possibly could. Our teachers are starting the process of administering pretests, and those pretests will be used to determine if our students made progress during the summer. So at the end of the summer session, we will have a post test and that will allow us to be able to determine if students show progress from the start of this summer school. Good evening, everyone. I'm going to share on behalf of middle and high school. So yesterday at middle school, we had our three sites up and running. At Eisenhower Middle School, we have 200 students enrolled. Carl Bruce had 150, and Argentine had a total of 146 students. We were able to meet our goal of being at a teacher to student ratio between 15 to one and 20 to one at all three sites. And we have a total of 68 teachers on staff. We also want to say a big thank you to the support from our substitute department for securing multiple subs in order to meet that desired ratio. All three sites were able to get students through the first day, including introducing many to a new building and new teaching staff. Our cafeteria, cafeterias were prepped and ready for both breakfast and lunch, and all students were able to get a warm meal. The biggest hurdle facing all three sites are students who reported on the first day without prior enrollment, but the site administrators and counselors have been working hard to get them all enrolled and ready to learn. On day two, today, we begun our shift from welcoming and setting the stage to, de to defining the curriculum that is designed to support the achievement gap. We are continuing to welcome students into the program and anticipate increasing numbers of students throughout this week and next. With our high school, we have approximately 890 students total attending both sites. They are also conducting phone calls and home visits to students who have not yet shown up. One bright spot for our high school, we already have one student mm -hmm. who has completed her half credit course. Good day. <laughs> Thank you so much, Ms. Scott and Mr. Yes. Sanders for the good news and very proud of that student who was able to accomplish what um, she needed in the first two days of summer school. Very motivated student. We have other good news, um, a graduation recap. As you know, the graduation ceremonies wrapped up last week, <clears throat> and we could not be prouder of the Kansas City, Kansas 
public schools class of 2021. It was such an honor to be able to hand out the diplomas to our seniors. Thank you all to our board members for being there as support to our students. And many thanks again to all the principals, teachers, support staff, the families who supported the, stu the, the students and helping each of them reach this goal. I want to give a very special shout out to Mr. Matt Anderson, who attended every single one of the eight graduations, although he was not required to, but that was his goal and he achieved it. So thank you so much, Mr. Anderson. It was very nice to have your company um, in each one of those. Thank you so much. And you, you can see a picture there. We have a, pic a picture for each of our graduations in that photo. Thank you, Sharida, for that. Um, state track, we have some athletes in our um, district and we know they are great. We have some students from Sumner and Wyandotte qualify for state track. And I'm happy to announce that Malik Falhoun, and you see him there in the middle, brought home two medals. He took eighth in the long jump and then gold medal in the Keisha Boys triple jump competition. His triple jump was over 45 feet. Mm. So congratulations to him. Oh, and all of the other Kansas City, Kansas athletes on a great spring season. Thank you. He looks great. On that same day, he got his diploma because he was competing the day of graduation. So it was, it was um, three things that he got that day. Summer school, we talked about that. We gave you an update. We have some pictures here, but we wanted to um, share that classes will run until July. And the, the great thing for students and families is that they will be, not only they will learn a lot, they will also be served breakfast and lunch daily. And we are also resuming our summer grab and go meal program. Anyone between the ages of one and 18 years old can go to any one of our six locations around the district for free breakfasts and lunches. And this program runs June 7th through July 30th, Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. So they have to register first, so make sure that you go on the website and register. But once you do that, it's completely free. The pickup times, noon to 2 p.m. And uh, we have six locations that you can find on the website. Oh, and here's a picture of the grab and go meal. Mm -hmm. The next picture is the one about vaccines. You may have heard that we have an initiative where we have, um, we are hosting a couple of COVID-19 vaccine clinics for anyone 12 and up, and not just for students, but for the whole families. Right. So we were yesterday at Schlegel's um, High School, and we will have one tomorrow at Sumner Academy from five to eight and you can receive either the Pfizer or the Johnson & Johnson. No appointments are needed, but minors um, under the age of 18 have to be there with their parents. But we want everyone in the family to come. And if you think you need a COVID test, we have people there doing COVID tests. Also, we have community members who are pitching in to provide supplies, food, and all kinds of goods for families. So make sure um, you, you take advantage of this. Our goal is when we come back in the fall, most of our families are vaccinated so we don't have to worry so much about COVID-19. So that's a great, and thank you so much, um, the people who worked on this, um, Ms. Morris, Sharida, and Lisa. Um, this, this is a great initiative and it's gonna be wonderful for our community. And finally, June is Pride Month, and I want to take this opportunity to emphasize that Kansas City, Kansas Public School is a safe and welcoming place for all of our LGBTQ students, staff, and community members. We stand with you, and you're all included and welcome here. Great community to be in. Thank you so much. And that's all for me, Mr. Lopez. Thank you, Dr. Miguel. Dolores Huerta, an advocate and organizer is quoted as saying, people would say, who is a leader? A leader is a person that does the work. It's very simple. It's a personal choice for people who choose to put in their time and their commitment to do the work. It's a personal choice. Dr. Miguel, you are a leader. 
You make a personal choice, a commitment, dedicate your time, energy, and love to do the work. It's a personal choice for you. In August of 2020, Ms. Page and I met with you and sat with you right across the hall mm -hmm. and asked if you would lean into a moment to guide, to lead, to organize, and to love our district as our interim superintendent. Not exactly knowing what all that entailed, mm -hmm. still you gracefully and confidently said yes with no hesitation and with plenty of love and dedication. This was a personal choice for you to do the work. On behalf of the Kansas City, Kansas Public Schools Board of Education, our staff, our yeah. students, <laughs> our families, and community, let me say gracias. Thank you. You stepped into this role, embraced the responsibilities, faced the challenges head on, and helped to steady our district and to continue to move us forward in a way that the Journal of the Kansas Leadership Center recently wrote how you brought steadiness among uncertainty. And always doing this with a genuine smile <laughs> and a heartfelt love for our students. You continue to be a beacon of hope persistence, leadership, and love for all who pay attention to our district. And I'm honored to have been able to serve alongside your leadership, learning from you along the way. I can't tell you how many people I run into, staff and non-staff, people in the community who praise you and the work that you've done with our, with our district and for our students. Some of you might be wondering why we're thanking you today and if it's okay to share, Dr. Miguel, uh, you mentioned to me earlier today that you may not be physically present mm -hmm. at our next board meeting. Um, and so our board uh, wanted to make sure that we recognized you in person mm -hmm. and thanked you in person. So again, muchísimas gracias. No sabe lo tanto que le agradezco por su apoyo, por su sinceridad, su liderazgo. Ha sido un honor poder trabajar a su lado Y para nuestros estudiantes y todos nosotros, ver una latina bilingüe como superintendente es algo inolvidable. I'd venture to say that, and someone will fact check me, I'm sure, <laughs> that this may, you may go down in KCKPS history as the first Latina superintendent in our district, and for that you should be proud. So again, thank you for loving our students, for loving our district, and for loving our community and accepting the challenge and the role and the responsibility of our district in this, uh, this last year. And so we just wanted to say thank you. I'll pause to see if any other of my board colleagues wanted right. to share anything. Um, <laughs> we really just wanted to say thank you. Thank you. I just want to say thank you. You've done an excellent job. Thank you. And I know that there's even more for you. Blessings to you. Thank you. Um, thank you, Mr. Lopez. Thank you, board. I, if you know me, you know I don't enjoy being in the limelight. Um, I thought it looked suspicious. I said um, the staff back there looks like a choir. I was hoping <laughs> I would have the chance to hear um, Dr. Lori sing finally. <laughs> I thought they would break into song any minute, but they didn't. Um, it just looked strange. Thank you so much. I could not have done this without all the people that you see back there. This is truly a team effort, so thank you, Edwin. <laughs> We have a little gift. Thank you, Dr. Miguel. And let me say, and, and let me say thank you to the board for trusting me with the district. I hope I, I met your expectations, but again, I want you to turn around because without them back there and everyone who is at home, this is not a job that was done just by myself. Thank you, everyone.
Thank you to the staff for coming in and joining us for that moment. We really appreciate all of you and the work you do. And again, thank you, Dr. Miguel. Thank you. So we'll go ahead and move on with our agenda. Wow, the room cleared out. I know. <laughs> I feel honored they were here for me, <laughs> not for the board meeting. <laughs> they will continue to watch, I'm sure. For sure. So we'll go on with our agenda. Um, first up, we have Ms. Crystal Watson with the Foundation of Excellence. Good evening, board. Good evening. Good evening. And good evening to uh, Dr. Miguel. I just want you to know you've been a pleasure to work with as the interim superintendent. And I personally found you very refreshing. And so um, you're going to still be around. I'm not That's going right. anywhere. You're not going anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I have something that. I would like to show the board. So let me. Here we go. This is the 31st annual golf tournament for the foundation. We are here because we're raising money for students and we're also raising money for programs um, and those programs support all of the efforts and initiatives, programs and projects within KCKPS. This year we had 40 teams. We had 20 teams, uh, four players per team this morning and then this afternoon, we had another set of 20. So we've had 160 players go through the golf course today here at Dubs Dread in KCK. Being here in Wyandotte County and being a part of KCK, um, obviously a lot of these golfers we see on a daily basis and a lot of these businesses we work with together. So um, glad to be a part of the organization, uh, glad to be a part of the tournament and help the scholarship recipients out too. appreciate all of our donors and we could not have this tournament without them. Here to support a great cause. Uh, we've been blessed to be a partner with KCKPS for uh, four years now since 2017. We played in the morning session, uh, weather was beautiful and um, how, do you, I mean, how do you not enjoy this? That's for a good cause. I am very excited to say, first of all, I want to thank Ms. Sarah, because Ms. Sarah in communication, she put that video together. Mm. And I didn't even have to ask for a video. Um, the communications and marketing department stepped up, so hats off to Sharita and also to Ed One. The whole communications department helped out tremendously, so you know that's a good showing of what partnership is all about. Secondly, I want to let you know, board, that uh, I appreciate the board members that were able to participate. You all were fabulous. They were great volunteers. So Ms. Uh, Maxine Drew and Ms. Wanda Brown Lee Page and Mr. Lopez showed up. They was in the house and it was great. They just stepped right in and I really appreciate you all being there. In fact, I think you guys, um, uh, this is the first time we've had such a showing from the Board of Ed at the Foundation Golf Tournament. So hats off to you. Uh, secondly, to all the volunteers from the district, uh, our district allowed employees who volunteered to be there. And so Dennis Covington and to the HR team, uh, Kelly, I, um, I really appreciate you guys so much because the staff enjoyed themselves. So you all need to be prepared to come next year. Um, let me tell you, we raised $107,635 thus far. We do have a few checks outstanding, but I'm going to report on what has come in. I can tell you that we spent under $20,000 in expenses. So total right now, 
uh, with all the green fees and all that, and scholarships, because you know we predominantly raise this for scholarships, we've spent only $55,000 on this golf tournament. So we are, I am recommending to the foundation board that we raise the scholarship amount from $3,000 per student to $5,000. So I am very confident that that will go through our scholarship committee and for final board approval through the Foundation Board of Excellence. Uh, again, we had 40 teams. We do uh, per, uh, give 12, 12 students the $3,000 scholarships. So next year that will raise it um, and we'll give around $60,000 total in scholarships for next year. Um, so again, I just want to thank everyone. That is our update for the Foundation for Excellence, and thank you again, KCKPS. Thank you, Miss Watson. I do have one question, Miss Page. Yes. Miss Page made me buy two hundred dollars worth of raffle tickets. How do I know if I won? Uh, <laughs> if you wasn't there, you don't win. <laughs> okay, okay, thank you. You had to be present to win. Oh, that was uh, I know. I'm okay. Congratulations. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Crystal. The next item is the recommendation that the Kansas City, Kansas Board of Education accept as an informational item the memorandum of understanding with infant loss resources. And we have um, Jackie Himpel on Zoom to present to us. Jackie, are you with us? Yes, I am. So can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Hi, um, good evening, Dr. Miguel and Board President, Mr. Lopez and Vice President, um, Ms. Brownlee Page and Board members. Uh, the MOU I'm presenting tonight is um, really more of a formal partnership from what we've had with, with Infant Loss Resources. So we have all of our parent educators who go into homes for home visiting to meet with families prenatal to age five, trained on safe sleep. We have a few of our newer educators who haven't been trained yet, but they will be. So this memorandum of understanding would provide the training from infant loss resources. And then for those families that do not have a safe place for their child to sleep um, for 12 months and under, we would provide a pack and play. And the parent educators go in and do a, a pretest and educate the parents on safe sleep, things to do, things not to do. Basically, safe sleep is the ABCs of a baby should be asleep alone in, on their back and at a clutter-free crib. And there's a particular group in Wyandotte County called Every Baby to One, and they have a website. And according to their statistics, one in three babies who die in Wyandotte County is due to uh, an unsafe sleep problem. So this MOU will just make formalize our partnership and be able to provide us more pack and plays, which run um, about 60 to $80 per pack and play. Um, we'll give those to, to families, so. Thank you so much. Any questions for Jackie? Thank you. Thank you, Jackie. Thank you, Jackie. The next item is the recommendation that the Kansas City Board of Education approve the Enough is Enough initiative as submitted by Lisa Garcia Stewart, Director of Student Services, and recommended by me. And we have um, Sarita Hatton. I always call her by first name. Huh? Ms. Hatton and Ms. Garcia Stewart. And as our staff come forward, um, again, I, I, uh, I'll make a personal this comment and, and plea for our community to really take a moment of introspection and to come together in light of today's 26th homicide, or 26th death, yeah. I'm sorry, student death that we've suffered at our district. Um, it's very heavy uh, for us to, to see that, um, and I can't even begin to imagine the pain our families are suffering. Um, and so a plea from, from our board, I think, from, from, from to just say to our community, um, you know, let's, let's come together and find ways to, to love each other, to bring peace, to work together, to end the violence. We can't have one more death 
um, student death, especially the gun violence in our community. It hurts all of us when we lose one student, one person in our community. So I would just, I, I'm, I'm just pleading with, with everyone watching, listening, please let's work together. Uh, we, we can't keep doing this um, with our, to our community. We have to love each other and work to come together. So um, um, again, just to plead to our community, let's find ways to work together um, to love and, and to end the, end the violence. Thank you, President Lopez, Vice President Bradley Page, board members, and Dr. Miguel. Thank you for those words and, and for the support from the board. It is hard to be before the board this evening to think about, one, why we're here and the initiative and movement around enough is enough, and yet to just be completely transparent and honest how heavy it is to think about another death of a student and the family and our students and staff that are impacted in our community. Yeah. So it is with a heavy heart that we're here this evening, um, but we want to be mindful of our community that is watching that we are working to together and collectively and collaboratively to do everything we can as a school district to support our youth. And that is why we're here again yet to talk about a proposal that's something that we can do you know, in the immediate future um, here in the next um, few weeks to support in one way. There are many ways that we can support our students. So this is just one immediate plan that we can have to certainly begin to provide options and opportunities, relationships and connectedness with our youth. And so this is a plan that um, has involved many people, Sharita, Tammy, Elizabeth, um, the Enough is Enough Student Advisory where we've had the opportunity to hear from our youth, to hear from our staff, to hear from principals. So I will turn it to my colleague, but definitely appreciate the support um, from our board for this initiative, for this movement. To support to support our students. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. And I'm sorry. Yeah, you're right. It is a very um, emotional afternoon. So this all comes around the plan of um, opening our facilities once again, allowing some of our community partners to come in and work with our students. And our proposal to the board is, you know, first of all, to allow those organizations to do that by filling out a request to use our district facilities. We're talking about our gyms, our tracks, uh, the auditorium. There will be a rental fee for those outside groups that do charge their uh, student athletes a monthly fee of any kind. Um, the plan could have some exceptions to it, but then it would also offer our current KCKPS coaches that would offer workouts for a certain amount of hours, for a certain amount of days each week a stipend mm -hmm. to push them to you know continue to interact with our students. Um, the facility proposal also would um, consist of, first of all, like we discussed, uh, paperwork would have to be filled out. We would house that on our website. Everybody would have a link. Um, it would basically lay out all of the district policies. The organizations will have to have proof of insurance. It does say some exceptions, and we'll explain that in just a second. Uh, they will pay a fee for rental. That's going to be discussed a little bit later during the meeting with Mr. Covington. Um, they will have to follow our current COVID-19 protocol, which is, of course, wearing masks inside of our facilities in and out, except for when you're actually participating in that sport. And then if the organization has anybody that tests positive for COVID-19, they would have to report to the school district immediately. We have set up um, something in place for that to happen pretty fall flawlessly. Uh, so we talked about exceptions to the fee. So um, I'm going to use Mr. Roberson as an example. So hopefully if he watches this, he is okay with that. <laughs> but say, for example, Mr. Roberson decides, you know what, on Monday and Tuesday in June, I'm going to dedicate some of my time to our, our students. And he works with one of our coaches to make that happen. Mm -hmm. That coach would be able to fill out paperwork on his behalf since this will only be KCKPS students they'll be working with and bring those kids in for a couple of days, work with them for a couple of hours. Volu those are volunteer hours he would be using. That means that that would cost him nothing. He's already giving us his time. And since it's our students, our coach, that would also cover us when it comes to insurance. So he would not have to have proof of insurance for his organization. Um, so that would be where that exception part kind of falls into place. And then I'm going to step aside and let Tammy kind of talk about what that stipend would kind of look like. 
Good evening, Board. Um, tried to make it simple. Uh, kind of like teachers pick the subjects they love to teach. Coaches coach the things they love to coach, and they all do it differently. Uh, but we're looking at if a coach invests six hours a week over a four-week period, so it's, it's a month of activity, we're looking at a $500 stipend uh, for middle school. That could be coaching instruction. It could be a camp. It could be workouts. For the, for the high school, it's the same thing. It's an option of six hours a week for four weeks the stipend of $500, or 12 hours a week, which would be four days a week for four weeks at $1,000. We do have some programs uh, that do practice four days or condition and work out four days a week. The estimated cost is $172,000, and that's uh, all middle school and high school coach stipends for June and July. Uh, this provides a stipend to engage 2,700 middle school and high school students throughout the months of June and July, with, which comes to about a $64 investment per student. That 2,700 <laughs> middle school student athletes, that's an anticipation that we do have people out. We already have coaches willing to come and add to their schedules and do, co do more clinics to involve more kids. Uh, this does not count outside groups that might come in and do things. Is that the end of mine? One thing that I think, and Tammy, correct me if I'm wrong, don't let the price tag, well, the price tag looks scary, right? <laughs> um, when you see that, that would be the very, that's the maximum. There is a chance we won't even hit nearly that amount, but that would be if all coaches were all in the entire time for the next two months, which we know the possible, the chances of that are probably pretty slim. We'll open it up now for any questions that you may have for any of us. This is, yeah. this is Wanda Briley Page. I like the fact that we're going to do something for kids, but I'm a little bothered because this seems to be more orientated toward athletes. Mm -hmm. And I think some of the kids that may have, have lost their lives, I don't think they were athletes. So what about those kids? that want something to do. I don't want to go through a fitness program. I just want to come and play ball. It gives me something to do. And I would love to see robotics, STEM classes. We do have some people in our district who have sponsored robotic teams. There are programs in our community partners, like um, uh, Mr. Robinson has a STEM program. and. Uh, uh, Lisa Henderson, I think that's her name. They have a STEM program with their program. And if we could have a chess club, you know, the kids, they want something to do. If I'm not mistaken, and someone will correct me, I don't know if it was one of our kids, but someone at Parkwood Park climbed over the fence trying to swim illegally mm -hmm. and ended up injuring themselves. So they want something to do. But I just like to see us open it up more for that kid. I don't want to be an athlete. Yeah. I just want to come and shoot some hoop or run up and down the court. We got to give them something to do. So I don't know if that's something you're going to add, but I don't see that there. So that kind of bothers me that we need to open up more and give these kids something to do because I'm, I'm not training to be in a program. I just want to have some fun and have a place to go to to see other people. Can Thank I, you. Can Vice I add on to her question? I'm sorry, before okay. you start, just because I don't want you to have to start over, because my mind was kind of running the same direction, mm -hmm. but I guess I'm still confused on is the gym going to be open to all, and I think I can hear that a little bit, or is it really program, program setting? So if I'm attending a program, then I can come, but if I'm not attending a program, then it's not open for them. So thank you both. Thank you, Vice President Brownlee Page, and, and thank you, um, Mrs. Clark. Those are great questions, and my nodding was in agreement, right? We want to do more and, and ex expand what we're doing. This was presented to you as something we can do based on our feedback from our advisory board that would have an immediate impact so that we can honor and validate what our students have shared with us that will be helpful in the immediate time, right, during, during summer. But we know that we want to continue to come back to you and expand and grow uh, with the board's permission. 
And with that, in agreement with you um, and for that feedback, as we look, we are partnering with community partners that are providing some of that enrichment that you spoke about, young women on the move, wind up for warriors. We know that there are things that are happening in the community and it can't be a one size fits all. I'm just sort of summarizing maybe the highlight of what you shared that we have to extend and develop in this continuum of opportunities for our students. And so we will continue to come back and present with the board's approval um, and recommendation, things that we can continue to do provide opportunities that you suggested. I think those are great suggestions um, this was just something that was based on the feedback that we knew that we could have an immediate turnaround to provide them that opportunity. But we realized that an opportunity for sport may not be that perfect match for a particular student, and we want to extend those opportunities. So we have met with the coordinator of the fine arts program, and we'll continue to brainstorm and bring those back to you. We knew that this was something, again, that we could do to immediately, with the board's approval, open the gyms as a first start and continue to develop those ongoing partnerships, programs, acti activities, and opportunities. And I'll let Tammy speak to the second question about the gym. <laughs> um, there are several groups from the outside organizations um, that would like to come and use the facility. And then sometimes in their groups, it's more of an open gym. It's their kids, they know who they are. Uh, they might not be the structured, skilled coaching. It may just be, you know, getting in teams, having games, that kind of thing. And again, that would be somebody from the outside that has a group that asked to use the facility and would sign up with somebody, you know, a district employee so that they could utilize the, fac the facility. So we're not saying it's just sports only. Uh, we have some of the kids who want to be in an organized thing and we have kids that don't. But that coach is going to have half the court doing this, watching them, because I don't see why half that money couldn't go to an open process where they can come in the gym and play, not organize, just if I want to shoot the ball. I don't. I know Wyandotte has a pool, Sumner has a pool. I know Miss Ayers just retired, but she teaches swimming. Why couldn't they, because I know Parkwood is closed, if I'm not mistaken, on the northeast side, and I don't know if there's any other pools around, but at least we could offer that to some people. I, I agree, and I think the pool I would have to say might be an insurance piece. I don't know what we do in the off season, okay. but it could but be something. But at least half could, of the money right. I could see going to have an open session and allow them to come and play. Because I know at Argentina, I go there, but they don't have a kid program. And after they change the structure of the building, they don't have as many kids coming through. So they don't have a lot of places to go. But we have all these buildings, and we keep saying schools are communities. I'm not fussing at you. I'm just saying I would like to see us take half that money and open it up and let these kids come in and play. They've been at home on a computer, pinned in, and we need to get them out, let them burn some of that energy, and that would help them out immensely. And we do have people who had robotics programs. If we could pull them in, and they're willing to do it, and like Lisa said, we have reached out to Jody Lynn. I think part of this opening up our facilities and also um, what Mr. Cuppington will present later when it comes to the rental fees will allow more of those organizations to start coming in and doing exactly what you're talking about. You're right, not every kid loves sports. Um, and so, um, and, and some kids don't even know that they do. So that's the whole idea about having some of these community partners come in and just even teaching like a two-hour course like hey this is how you kick the soccer ball because um, some kids may find a love you know we did do some great stories Sarah back um, running the camera you know sat down with some of our high school soccer players that talked about just moving to the school district not speaking the language but then getting out there on that field and having that mm -hmm. love and he got to meet new people through just that game. Mm -hmm. And then he talked about the relationships. So we know there's some team building that these kids don't even know is possible yet because they haven't ever tried it. So that's kind of the thought process behind it. Ms. Drew? Yes, um, uh, and I, I appreciate what uh, Ms. Page is saying, but as I was looking through all of this, and one of the things I focused more on the community facility use chart, and it had several rooms that would be available for different groups to be able to use it. And I also heard where you do have community partners who can apply to come through. This is the first time this is happening within yes. our district and we're laying the foundation. And I think once we get it started, 
It will expand where more people will be involved, where we possibly could open up the swimming pools, whereas they could come in, students could come in and swim and play. Um, I, I just want to say that I believe this is a good foundation for us to start with. Mm -hmm. I think they're doing everything they can since it is the first time. We're going to tweak it and make it even better and at a different level, whereas we can completely open it up because for years they couldn't go during the summertime. So uh, I want to say I appreciate the information that you all are giving and more than anything, we need to let the community know that these buildings are available whereas they can come and set up chess games where the mm -hmm. kids can play. They can use the gym. It may not be every single day that there will be the coaches with the basketball team, but at least we are letting our community know this is available. And I think, again, if you look at the community facility use chart, you'll see that there are many rooms that can be used even if the gym is being used where they're playing sports or whatever. So there is a foundation of where we're going to go so that we can even move up to a higher level to get our kids engaged during the summertime. Thank you. And that's Thank exactly you. right, uh, Ms. Trum. Uh, this is just the beginning. The first step to opening mm -hmm. our schools to the community so that we can address these um, concerns that we have about mm -hmm. how we're losing students. And, and, and also um, for all students, so they right. have something to do. So I They're want to thank athletes. the staff. This is the mm -hmm. first step to, to hopefully doing something bigger and ongoing with the community. Right. So we will continue to meet with community members and reach out to different organizations um, so that they can come in and offer our students possibilities. Right. Thank you. I, I just, oh, sorry. oh, I'm sorry. No, I was just saying, I hear what you're saying, but I still think we need to offer, because I'm getting a different viewpoint from some of the community partners. They're not saying what you're saying, and I, I don't know. I'm just trying to figure it out. But I just think we need to offer that free play and not depend on them. I'd rather use half that money if the coaches want to do what they need to do and let another group come in and allow the kids to have free play. That's all I'm saying. I, I don't have anything else, but we got to open it up and allow these kids. That money was set. If you look at what it was said in the ESSA program, it's supposed to be community, the schools working together and reaching out for these kids and giving them something. We got to do that. Ms. Humphreys, thank you. Are we looking at funding this through some of our ESSER funding? Is that correct? So right. Or do we have other funding to do that this summer? So right now we're utilizing other funding because the ESSER funds require an application process and review and that's why this is just our first initial immediate step and I, I can't appreciate, can't thank you enough for the feedback and what we can continue to do to present stronger options as we move through but we wanted to do and provide this option now and then continue to submit the um, opportunities through the application process. Because I know there's a big push to coordinate existing programs that are out in the community to cooperate with the school districts through ESSER to expand the programming. And while a lot of the groups are just now coming out of, out of the COVID and they can't get a lot of things off the ground this summer, it's something for us to work on and to tweak and get really off the ground for next summer mm -hmm. to, to look and see what our kids really need. And like several people have mentioned, we do have kids that are really into sports, mm -hmm. but we really need to look and see how we can serve our other students, like the chess club kids, the robotics and stuff. And we've got a really good chance with this ESSER funding to really get a jump start for next year on how we can really serve some of our other students that we haven't been able to before. So I really hope that we, we, we can really work with our community partners to get a really great program up and running for the next school year and next summer to take advantage of this funding to, to serve our students. Absolutely. So thank you for getting some Getting something started for this year, but I hope you're really getting that excitement going for our next year. Absolutely. Thank you for that feedback, and and this is why we just this is just our first step because 
when there are coaches, then they're covered by our insurance. So we're just, and won't, and won't be required to get that additional insurance by, so this is just our first step and we wanna to continue to come back and present more and more of those opportunities that you get provided feedback for us. But I think- I do have a comment. Um, we have to also think about you know, park and recreations is something that is heavily not being held accountable for students in park and recreations. So as it was just mentioned about the insurance component, one thing that we should look into is to not necessarily take everything on our shoulders, but to see how we can partner with park and recreations to have that oversight. So what that may look like is park recreations already have the group set up, already have a plan mapped out and working with them just to be able to use the facility. So I'm not sure if that option has been explored, but we have to remember we're not the only ones in Kansas City, Kansas, who are trying to do initiatives for students. We can use that, those community partners that already get our tax dollars to help them expand the dollars that we're already putting into it in that way. I just wanted to say that I am on the, the board for the Park City Rec. We do work together throughout the year. There's summertime, uh, activities are more outside, not needing our indoor facilities like they do during the winter. But you're right, that is a continual conversation and we wanna to try to help them develop the strength of their curriculum, uh, their programs, while we also strengthen ours. Ms. Clark. No, the only thing I wanted to say is I, I definitely appreciate what, they're, what they've done. And I think the thing to keep in mind that for me, I need to keep in mind is you all really didn't have a true blessing until more of like recently and so to have the conversation or expectation of what more can you do i don't want that to be an unfair conversation because this is the most we really have like said yeah we like it and we want to go forward so i think that needs to be said because if i was in your shoes that's how i would feel so mm -hmm. um just wanted to mention that yeah and and mr lopez i just want to say I'm not knocking it because I think we need it. I mean, what more proof do we need than what happened today? Mm -hmm. I still contend, and I respect everything that's been said, because when I talked to Mr. Robinson, he said his program wouldn't start until July. And there's still some misunderstanding about the ESSER funds and how they're being used and whether or not they merge. But we still need to offer to that kid who doesn't want to be in sports some time for some free rec time. And there's nothing wrong with that, with us doing that. And then also check out all the things. It's not a knock. Now we gotta be able to say things and everybody not take it so personal. I don't think you have. I'm just saying, what about that kid who doesn't wanna do that? And I don't think that's an unfair statement that my kid just wants to run up and down the court. And if he wants to fall down, get back up, lay down, turn a flip, let them do it, because they've been pent up. So if we can get some of this energy out, I don't see anything wrong with that. We appreciate the feedback. We'll definitely mm -hmm. follow up with Pastor Roberson. Absolutely. So Ms. Garcia-Stewart, um, is this an informational item tonight, or is there a motion, um, a so recommendation? I'm looking for the motion for the board's approval. OK. So um, are, is, there, is there a motion? There is a recommendation. No, no it's information information tonight. Because that's what it says on the thing, except the informational report mm -hmm. item with potential mm -hmm. action to follow at the next meeting. That's what it says up there. Okay. At the bottom. Yeah, I thought that was the last one. So I, I, I'll own that mistake. I publicly, I, I okay. thought I sent the one for approval for recommendation. This was like Because we one. never got the, the actual money things until today. Okay. You gave us the appeal a couple of times, and we got that. Okay. I think most of us got that, but we never saw dollar signs until tonight okay. so I, w I would though ask then if that's the case um to the team um is there a plan to st what what's the date to start some of these activities and if we wait until the next board meeting how far back does that put you with the start or the plans right. plan to start yeah. for some of these activities with the gym um i think many of the partners are waiting to hear if they can yeah. start scheduling things so i've just been in a lot of conversations waiting for a moment where it's approved with regards to our schools they're already going uh, they're organized they're going we'll have more especially at the middle school level people involved when the decisions made so if we wait two more weeks then we're 
No. <laughs> this pushing back uh, till July. Randy, I would like to make a motion that we go ahead and approve the community, the revised community use of schools fees as submitted by Dennis Covington. So I, I think that's a, a different motion. Yeah. I'm sorry, Dr. Yeah. Yeager. That's the next item. I think the. Sorry, so, I, that, I make a motion that we approve what was just presented about the community use as submitted by Lisa Garcia. Yeah. Second. So sorry. Is, thank you, Dr. Second. Yeager. So there's a motion by Dr. Yeager and a second by Ms. Clark. Um, further discussion or questions from board members? Yeah, I would still like to see. Now, I, I'm for it, but I'm going to vote against it because I don't see where you're making that adjustment for those kids to have open play. This is just the way it is, and I don't think that's fair. Thank you, Ms. Page. Other uh, questions? Mr. Robert Pace, can I say something to that statement? Um, based on the insurance that we cover, that we have, we can't sponsor another activity like that where we just open up our facilities. If, if we're going to do that, we're going to have to go get another type of insurance that cover us doing those open gym type activities. But the current insurance that we have now only covers us if we have our coaches in the facilities. So if our coaches are there and they're just watching them play, they can't do that? Yes, they can. If there's a coach there. Okay, that's what I'm saying. Half yes. of them coach and the other half be, they can watch them play. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's all I'm saying. And you don't have to agree, but I know which way I'm voting. Thank you. Other questions or comments from board members? Thank you for the clarification, Mr. Covington. I apologize for, um, for the miscommunication um, <laughs> on the recommendation there. I apologize for that. So, Mr. Lopez. Yes, Dr. Wynn, thank well, you. It seemed like there should be some uh, flexibility and some um, manner in which the um, some accommodation made so thank you thank you dr. Wynn and um, it sounds like staff is definitely listening to, to the um, comments and questions made by board members and we'll continue to adjust how um, how that's happened and, and but with put the flexibility that in the motion also amend the motion so that that is clear as a as a not a directive, but as a suggestion that there needs to be some additional accommodation. Okay, thank you, Dr. Wynn. Dr. Yeager and Ms. Clark, since you made the motion in the second. Uh, um, I would like to keep it as is. I think we've made our request known enough times and I think they will honor it. Okay. Thank you. So the motion is, there is a motion on the floor. It's been seconded. There's been discussion and questions. We'll go ahead and ask Ms. Smith to do a roll call vote, please. Yolanda Clark. Yolanda Clark, yes. Maxine Drew. Maxine Drew, yes. Mac, uh, Janie Humphreys. Janie, yes. Randy Lopez. Randy Lopez, yes. Wanda Brownlee Page. I'm voting no, because I still think we should have the flexibility. That's it. And I don't have a problem with the program, but we deserve the flexibility. Dr. Wynn? Dr. Wynn, yes. Dr. Yeager? Dr. Yeager, yes. Thank you. Motion carries. Thank you so much, uh, staff. Thank you, board, for the great dialogue. Um, and staff, if there are additional questions, let us Thank know. You. Thank you so much. The next item is accept as an informational item the revised community use of schools fees as submitted by Mr. Cavington, who is ready to present to us. Good evening, board. Uh, Good evening. It is great pleasure I bring to you all the new uh, fee schedule for our community use of facilities. Uh, I can say that we have researched uh, our surrounding areas with either the park and rec or other school districts, and now our fees are very competitive with what other uh, districts uh, charge for the use of their facilities. Uh, I'll walk you through some of the changes that, that are drastically reduced. Like our gyms used to be $75 an hour, and as you can see now, they are at $35 an hour. And these costs cover, these fees cover the cost that the district will incur. It's not a profit-making center. Uh, the custodians will be paying a uh, time and a half for covering these facilities. That would run us about 20 to 25 dollars an hour, and then the uh, lights and utilities and stuff will make up the rest. But uh, our main use would probably be our gyms, mm -hmm. and uh, as I think Dr. Yeager or 
um, Ms. Drew say we do have our classrooms listed uh, for any activities that they need in the classrooms, gymnasium, I mean the auditoriums, uh, our multi-purpose rooms, all of these facilities will be open to the public at the uh, prices listed on your screen. And if I scroll down, you can see our The outside facilities uh, to practice on our baseball fields, it will be 90 minutes. It will cost you only just $15 for a practice on a baseball field. If you want to use the soccer fields or the stadiums, mm -hmm. it's $25 an hour on turf, 15 on grass. And if you're at night and need the lights, you have to pay an additional $25 for the lights an hour. And I present to you as an informational item, the new revised community use of school fees, and I'm open to any questions. I do have a question, Dennis. Yes, ma'am. I think my question is, as um, someone mentioned earlier, the activities are going to start here in Ju June and July. Yes. So if someone comes in tomorrow to be able to use our fields or our classrooms or whatever, they will still pay the old fee. Is that correct? That's correct, until you all okay. adopt the new fees. And so um, I would like to um, recommend or I would like to make a motion that we go ahead and approve this. And the reason why is because if we don't and we wait until later, I would hate to have someone who we just approved the um, partnership with Lisa and then those may want to come in and use our fields during the summer months would be hindered with that old fee until we get to pass it in two weeks. So my motion is that we go ahead and pass the revised community use of school fees as submitted by this Dennis Covington. Thank you, Dr. Yeager. There is a motion on the floor to approve the revised community use of school fees. Is there a second? A second. Seconded by Ms. Clark. I'll open it up to further discussion or questions. I would have liked to have asked this question before the motion. I'm just curious about the fees and like just the methodology behind coming up with them. You don't have to give me a lot, but I'm just curious about how uh, we just, like I said, we uh, researched the uh, surrounding school districts and then the park and rec facilities. Okay. Uh, our original pr old prices was way out of line. Yeah, way I agree out of that. line. So okay. we went back and just researched those and brought them back in line to where we will cover the cost to the district for okay. uh, outside people that are not in partnership with us. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's the part I, I yes. missed, the research part. Okay. Mr. Covington? Yes, ma'am. Um, when someone comes in to use our, our fields, like our turf fields, they have a um, contract that they sign. Yes. Stipulating uh, what they can and cannot do on yes. the field. Like no. No beer, alcohol and all that stuff. No bubble gum. Yes. <laughs> all that stuff. No dogs. Yes. yes. And if they violate those agreements. Then well, they have to submit a, a liability insurance with uh -huh. us, with us listed as an insurer. And if they damage our fields, they have to pay for them okay. or damage our facilities. And then we don't let them use them. And they are barred. Right. So we, we check to make sure that they're responsible. Yes. And um, I had a second question. Now I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> so um, there, there are some special considerations with our turf fields that we we, yes. want to, we want to be responsible for the, the money that our taxpayers have invested in our fields. That's why we, we're very careful who we allow to use our fields. Definitely, because to repair the turf fields, and as you saw last year, we uh, fixed one of them. It's like $600,000. Yeah, so it's, yeah. It's, it's not that we don't want people to use our fields. We just want to make sure that we are taking care of the fields that we have used taxpayer money. Correct. To provide for our students to, to work on. And when it comes to when our kids are come August, when our kids start using the fields and stuff, there are students come first before yes. outside groups. Yes. Our students will always take press. So it's not that, that we don't always want them to come in. It's just that our kids' practice time comes before outside groups Correct. do. Correct. Okay. Thank you. I just wanted to make sure that the community understands that sometimes we have a lot of demands on our fields when school right. starts. 
that we just can't always. And we will have on our website the uh, application and the rules mm -hmm. and that all the approvals come into our office and uh, I make the decision to approve or disapprove. And if anyone has any <laughs> questions on how to fill it out, they just have to call your office yes, and Ms. Ms. Uh, the administrator's mm -hmm. assistant yes. will help mm -hmm. them figure that out. Yes, ma'am. The form is very easy. Thank well, you. you know, some of us are tech impaired <laughs> like me. <laughs> well, yes, uh, and it's also able to be downloaded. You can print it and send it to us. Okay. <laughs> Ms. Clark? I, I have one more question, and it's a little bit off topic, so I just need you to tell me when I do have this conversation. We've received a lot of feedback about our fields and the condition of some of them and some of the lighting. So when does that conversation take place? Is that in the budget conversation? Uh, we're we can... working on those fields now. All of them, because I can list some out that have been, okay. Yes, uh, we are, we're doing a lot of work this summer over the fields, because a lot of them was not playable. Right. Since we uh, went into COVID, they weren't maintained, but we are working on the fields right now for each of the seasons. We'll get through the football and all those this uh, summer, and prior to softball and baseball next year, we'll have all the fields done. Does that include lighting? I've been to games where they had to cut the game short because they can't turn the lights on on some of the baseball fields. Now, some of the fields do not have lights. So okay. that has not been addressed. Or one team couldn't play, so JV was playing varsity. Well, it was reversed. But anyway, they had to cut. They, the other kids could not play because they did not right. have lights. Right. I, ha I have a uh, uh, consultant now looking at okay. adding lights and the cost of lights, and that will come back to, to the board before we go down that track but okay. as of right now our it. baseball fields don't have lights okay thank you thank you other questions discussion if not there's a motion and a second on the floor um miss smith roll call vote please yolanda clark yolanda clark yes maxine drew maxine drew yes janie humphreys janie yes randy lopez randy lopez yes wanda brownlee page wanda brownlee page yes dr Wynn. dr Wynn, yes Dr. Yeager. Dr. Yeager, yes. Thank you. Motion carries. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, Board. Covington. Thank, you. Thank you, Board. Thank you, Board. The next item is a recommendation that the Kansas City Board of Education approve the change of the dollar amount paid to an employee with a requirement of one year of service as repayment as submitted by Ms. Tushman. And I believe it's going to be presented by Ms. Cynthia Fox. Good evening, President Lopez, Vice President Brownlee Page, board members, and Dr. Miguel. Last month, you approved the MOU for our parent teachers participants to complete their special education degrees at Fort Hayes University. We appreciate the support for this program because it does allow us to increase our ability to invest in our employees through the Grow Your Own Teachers program. Currently, we have three tuition reimbursement programs, including the Parity Teacher, Special Education Waiver, whereby a teacher who already has a license as a general education licensed teacher in the state of Kansas can obtain a waiver for special education and master's matching program to obtain a master's degree in education. When teachers accept our tuition reimbursement, it is with the understanding that for every $1,000, they will serve one year in our district, as you were able to discuss last month uh, with the Fort Hayes MOU. With your approval, we would like to modify the current one year for every $1,000 to one year of service for every $2,500. An example would be that the Parent to Teacher program currently costs approximately $9,000 to $10,000. That would mean that someone right now would be signing on to stay for 10 years of service. But if you accept uh, this modification, then they would be staying for four years of service. These reimbursement programs would enable our district, and it does, to attract, retain, and develop our own employees. So we thank you for consideration of this modification to the years of service for the tuition reimbursement. Thank you, Ms. Fultz, for the information. Um, questions from board members? If not, there is a recommendation for change um, for a, an action tonight. 
I'd like to make a motion that we accept the dollar amount modification for year of service. Second. Okay. There's a motion and a second. Further discussion? Can, can she repeat what she said? I, I lost the end of it. I'm sorry. I didn't hear your right. ending statement. You made a motion to approve. Accept the dollar Please. amount modification for the year of service. Mm -hmm. For the for the dollar amount modification to go from one year of service for one thousand dollars to one year of service for twenty five hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yes. Thank you, Miss Folks, for the clarification. Miss Drew, thanks for the motion. There was a second, I think. Miss mm -hmm. Clark, thank you. Any further questions? Ms. Smith, roll call vote, please. Yolanda Clark. Yolanda Clark, yes. Maxine Drew. Maxine Drew, yes. Janie Humphreys. Janie, yes. Randy Lopez. Randy Lopez, yes. Wanda Brownlee Page. Wanda Brownlee Page, yes. Dr. Wynn. Dr. Wynn, yes. Dr. Yeager. Dr. Yeager, yes. Thank you. Motion carries. Thank you so much, Ms. Folks. Thank, Thank you, board. Folks. Okay. Continuing with our agenda, next up is our consent agenda. Would entertain a motion to approve tonight's consent agenda? So move. Second. Second. Moved and seconded. Ms. Smith, roll call, please. Yolanda Clark. Yolanda Clark, yes. Maxine Drew. Maxine Drew, yes. Janie Humphreys. Yes. Randy Lopez. Randy Lopez, yes. Wanda Brownlee Page. Wanda Brownlee Page, yes. Dr. Wynn. Dr. Wynn, yes. Dr. Yeager. Dr. Yeager, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Motion carries. Next up is uh, our executive session. Dr. Miguel, would you like to dismiss staff at this time? Yes, thank you, Mr. Lopez. Um, this is it for staff. You can um, be dismissed. Thank you. Thank you, attendance. staff, for joining us tonight. Um, I would now entertain a motion to recess to executive session to discuss hearing officer reports pertaining to employee termination appeals under the non-elected personnel exception to the coma um, going in at 6.20 and for five minutes coming out at 6.25 with a potential action to follow. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded, Ms. Smith. Yolanda Clark. Yolanda Clark, yes. Maxine Drew. Maxine Drew, yes. Janie Humphrey. Janie, yes. Randy Lopez. Randy Lopez, yes. Wanda Brownlee Page. Wanda Brownlee Page, yes. Dr. Wynn. Dr. Wynn, yes. Dr. Yeager. Dr. Yeager, yes. Thank you. Motion carries. Thank you.
All right, would entertain a motion to come back into open session, please? So move. Second. Moved and seconded. Ms. Smith, roll call. Yolanda Clark. Yolanda Clark, yes. Maxine Drew. Jamie Humphreys. Jamie, yes. Randy Lopez. Randy Lopez, yes. Wanda Brownlee Page. Wanda Brownlee Page, yes. Dr. Wynn. Dr. Wynn, yes. Dr. Yeager. Dr. Yeager, yes. Thank you. Thank you. We are back in open session. Would enter entertain a motion to approve the hearing officer report? I still move. Second. Moved and seconded. Ms. Smith, roll call, please. Yolanda Clark. Yolanda Clark, yes. Maxine Drew. Maxine Drew, yes. Janie Humphreys. Janie, yes. Randy Lopez. Randy Lopez, yes. Wanda Brownlee Page. Wanda Brownlee Page, yes. Dr. Wynn. Dr. Wynn, yes. Dr. Yeager. Dr. Yeager, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Motion carried. Before we close tonight, I do just want to remind our board, um, you did receive an email from Ms. Page and I um, today looking for dates for our next budget meeting. So if you wouldn't mind, please respond um, to Ms. Smith and let her know your availability. You have a, a number of dates and times. Um, we're trying to set a half day for our next budget workshop. So if we can get those by noon tomorrow, uh, Ms. Page and I can work with Ms. Smith to try to set a date with staff for that next budget meeting. Um, Ms. Randy, Page. we also, I just wanted to mention there was a uh, comment from the community as it relates to renaming our schools. Um, I received an email from that. Thank you, Dr. Yeager. Yes, uh, um, I received an email as well um, and responded back to the individual who emailed us um, and let them know that that is something we are looking at internally um, and will communicate about um, as well. Thank you. Okay, I think that's it. Please just make sure, uh, board, I know we're asking a lot of, out of you for the next month and a half as we're working through the budget, mm -hmm. um, but it's a lot to get through. Um, so please, whatever time you can spare, I know it's hard to get all seven of us at the same time, but we'll, we'll do the best that we can to, to, to make that happen. Um, again, um, Dr. Miguel, thank you. And again, plea to our community to let's come together and enough is enough and stop the violence and loving our community. So with that, our meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.